The bugs are slowing us down. We don't like the bugs. They always come in the bad moment. They eat our buffers. They get us delayed. We end up working days and nights and weekends because of them. Agile methodology is about developing fast. It's about building incrementally. And how do I actually building incrementally without getting buried in bugs that are slowing us down? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can manage bugs in Agile and still deliver successful products that bring value to your customers. So let's get started. Hi everyone, my name is Anka. I'm an Agile coach specialized in scaling Agile. I work with big companies and also with growing businesses to scale Agile in multiple Agile teams. In this channel, I'm releasing one educational video about Agile every single Tuesday, so feel free to subscribe and click on the bell button to get a notification. Now, let's get started with what are bugs. I will start with a bit of a history. I've been managing teams and coaching them in becoming more efficient for over 12 years. 12 years ago, we were doing mostly waterfall. We are kind of calling it agile, but was not agile. And back then we were defining the requirements. We were sure about the requirements. We were getting a sign off. We started the development kind of iteratively, like we had uh, small functionalities, we were testing it, but the reality is that they were facing the client whenever the product was ready. And guess what? Boom. Everything was booming, the client was not happy, it was not meeting the requirements, it was not meeting the expectations, and it didn't really matter anymore who was right, who was wrong, it was a lost case, it was a big, big mess, and we had to fix it. This is waterfall problem. That's why a giant came in and said, we are going to build incrementally. So at any given time, we have a product, we have a small functionality that will put it in front of our customers and we are going to test if that is meeting the expectations. We are not going to wait for a bomb to grow until it will make such a big explosion that nobody could live from that alive or you will need three months of vacation to recover. This is how Agile is addressing the bugs problem from the beginning. However, at least in software, there are bugs, we know them. How do we deal with that in Agile? In software, a bug is a malfunction. Whenever something doesn't work as expected or it causes an incorrect result. I will give you the tip number one of this video whenever you are identifying a bug because unclear specifications, because it's a functionality that hasn't been described, that's not a bug. We are not going to treat that as bugs in Agile. We are going to treat that as new functionality. We create the user story for that. So we take those away, new functionalities. Now we take the malfunctions and we are going to classify them. We have high priority, medium priority, low priority. High priority is something that is blocking us from achieving the main functionality that we are building. Medium priority is that we can do that functionality, however, with a workaround. It's not ideal. And low priority are everything that is cosmetic issues. This classification helps us from the beginning to know how do we deal with the bugs. And because we are in Agile and we are prioritizing first the highest value, I'm going to tell you something we may not do the low priority bugs ever. And here comes one question. Do we assign story points to bugs? No, no, no. We don't assign story points to the bugs. However, remember what I just told you before? If that bug is actually a lack of requirement or we got to know more about the functionalities, then we make that a user story. And in a lot of situations, whatever we are facing, where all these bugs that we are seeing are coming from the fact that we didn't know enough. And that's the whole agile concept. We are building incrementally. We don't know it all from the beginning, but we want to put the product, the functionalities in front of our customers so we can build incrementally. 
and those are new functionalities and we treat them as user stories. Whatever is called a bug and we identify it later, that we are timeboxing it. A timebox, we say we take two days, we take five hours, we take a certain amount of time to look into that bug and to try to fix it or to understand what's going on. In most of the times when we are dealing with the bugs, it takes 90% of the effort to understand it and to identify where is the problem. And it takes 10% of actually fixing it. And sometimes this proportion is even more extreme, like 99% we understand where is the problem and 1% we just go and do the fix. It is not worth it to add story points to refine them. That thing is not worth it. Because if there is a bug, most chances are that we really don't know why we have it and we need to investigate it. Whenever we know what is the problem, that's a quick fix. And basically, there is no point of spending time in refinement. When it comes to team velocity and bugs, since we are not giving story points to a bug, but the team performance counts on the velocity, if you have a lot of bugs, we are going to have a low velocity for the team. And that's not good. That metric is not good for the team. So our target needs to be to optimize and to reduce the number of bugs. Remember what I told you first. Most of them are new functionalities, treat them as such. And for the bugs that are really bugs, we have to be smart about how we, do, how we deal with them. And because we classify them, we have urgent, medium, and low. The urgent bugs are the ones that are taking a lot of our time and our intention is to avoid them. Prevention is better than resolution. To prevent them, our development process needs to include refinement, development, code review, testing, client acceptance, and then it's done. If we are introducing this pipeline, it will be harder to identify bugs because we went through the whole chain. We put our functionality in front of our customer or because it's not always realistic to have the customer really checking. We have a product owner, we have a boss, we have a teammate that understands how the customer is using that functionality, that has a different perspective of it. We have a tester that all of that counts in testing it. We want, and while we are doing that, it makes it harder afterwards to find bugs because most of the times afterwards are improvements, are new functionalities, things that we didn't think about yet. And that's perfectly fine. We just clarified, those are user stories. They are not bugs. Another way of minimizing bugs in Agile is by adding standards in your code. Agile is not only about making scrum ceremonies, about sprints, product backlog. It's also about DevOps. It's also about the way we are writing the code. And to avoid bugs, we can have a code review by another colleague. And whatever we are submitted has got a second pair of eyes that is looking into it. This is a way of identifying them quite early in our development stage. Another thing that I always like to do is that everyone is scared of bugs. And usually it's a metric that we look for agile teams to say, well, guys, you are not doing well. The effort you spent on bugs doesn't count against your user stories. You have to minimize these bugs. However, there is a lot of pressure on the customer to fix the bugs. Another way of dealing with that is encouraging the team to identify bugs during the sprint. Exactly in that process of development, code review, testing, product owner acceptance, then is when we need to identify bugs. And the way I do that, I'm introducing another way of tracking them and I call them sub-bugs. Like when we are splitting a user story and you have subtasks, we are tracking those bugs with sub-bugs and they count in the definition of that of the user story. They help us to deliver the user story. It's part of our story points and everyone is happy because those sub-bugs don't really count bad for them. The first time that I introduced this sub-bugs concept, the teams loved it. It really helped 
to decrease the number of bugs we identify later because everyone was trying to catch everything in the sub bugs or calling them new functionalities and that's how we deal with that. I'm doing an educational video every single Tuesday so if you like this video give it a thumbs up, subscribe and click on the bell button to get notification. I will see you next week.